One of the things that I try to tell people when uh, I'm doing a set of heads for them is uh, make sure I got the valves first. I don't do any work until I get them because you never know what the diameter of each valve is, even from the same manufacturer. You can get 50 valves and there be as much as a half thousandth to seven tenths difference depending on when the batch was made, when they was cut. Uh, in a day, let's say they had to have 100 valves, the next day comes. The sizing can be a little bit different depending on the cutters. Now, I use SI valves. I've tried all of them from Manly to Foray. And for the dollar spent, the quality and workmanship of the SI valve, uh, it's just hard to beat. I've been doing business with them for 24 years. Old JD there is a real good friend of mine. And I've used these valves on everything from blown applications, nitrous. Never, not once, have I had a valve failure. And they make them for all different costs. You will find that they are the best going, which is why I use them. I have used Manly. I have used Foray. Uh, I've even used the titanium man, uh, his stuff, and uh, it's it's just for the quality of money spent, they can't be beat. Okay, anyway, what I do on this deal when I set a valve uh, guide situation up is, unlike a lot of people, my brooches are a half thousandth to a thousandth undersized. I do it purposely. There's a reason. Because I hand hone to finish so I can get the hone like a cylinder bore straight from the top to bottom. I use this tool. This right here is a hole size gauge. I'll try to zoom in on it there for you. And they actually make a tool or a, a, a dial bore hone gauge for this. They're very expensive and I will get one eventually. But over 20 years, I have learned the feel of this within a tenth or two. I know that's hard to believe, but it's about feel and pull and getting this size when you go in the guide. And um, I've nailed it down because I did work for a place that had that gauge. It's about twelve or $1,300. So when I had access to it, was what I'd done was I figured out how to mic this, mic the stem, the relationship of the dial board going in the guide and the feel or pull, which you would not believe how accurate you can be with these. It actually has a thimble on the end that you can close and expand the guide hole, and then when you put it in the guide, you got to pull, and in the guide, you can actually feel where it's get loose and then tight, and then you stay that area just like a, a CK-10 hone on a cylinder bore. You hit that area more than come up the top. Anyway, typically this is how I do it. What I do is I take my micrometer in this case. Um, I have a, a mid to toy you uh, four digit decimal place. Three here and one on the thimble. And what I do is I'll go in here on the valve. If it's a performance motor, I check every valve. If I feel, I go ahead and set them up, and then I go in here and mic them in three places. The bottom, the middle, and the top. See, that way I get a picture on what the valve stem looks like here, here, and here. Now I do this on brand new valves and a lot of people say, well, why do you do that for? Just run a broach through them, get your feel and go. Because nowadays and even back when quality was better, you still had oddballs and as long as you catch it and you know, you can label the valve, stamp a number on it and put which hole that it's in. By going in here first and hitting them here, here, and here, then you can take the valves and go, okay, they're all the same within a tenth, so whatever I set this to, then I can set it in the guide, and you don't get into that per valve, per guide hole, which takes a lot of time. If it's necessary, that's fine. Point zero, 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 one, I can live with that, but if it gets any more, 
that three tenths difference, three is the magic number, three and up, I go, okay, whoa, mark the valve and pick me a hole to hone it and set it. Uh, typically in cylinder bores, uh, most of the machine shops try to get two tenths and below on a cylinder bore from top to the bottom. I'm treating this the same way. Now once I get the measurement, I'm just going to walk you through how I do it. Once I get the measurement and pull it and check it, then I lock it down. Then that's when I go in here and I'll show you how back on this again. Sorry about the tape break. But what I was getting at is once I size the stem, I usually pick off the center just to get it close on my four digit place. Then that's when you take this here, this hole gauge, and you expand it until it's spring loaded until you get a feel. Now I have a, a excuse me, what's the word I'm bringing it? I, I have a bench vise that I actually lock it down in. I'm trying to show you so you get the picture. All right, now, there's a feel that that's got and it's going to take you a couple of tries to get it. There we go. That's pretty close. Once I get that size to this measurement, which according to this is 0.3, 7, That's a perfect 371. Then we take this measurement, and I'm going to show you what we do. Then we're going to take that measurement and put it in here. Now see, that's pretty loose because I measured to the tightness of the guide. Then I'm going to take and go in here and expand it a little bit till I get this feel. And you can just feel, see it's tighter up at the top, and as it goes down it gets looser. Now what that's going to tell me is I need to spend my time up here on the top. Because what happens is, if you go off this measurement right here, let's say you try to size it, it feels tight. So if you go in there and shoot the hone on the whole thing, you're going to open the guide up from there all the way uh, to there. And that's not what you want to do. You want to attack it in the area where it's tight so that it pulls into everything else. And I can just feel right here the looseness about midway toward the bottom and then right here it starts to get tight. So at this point, let me show you how I do this. I'll take my guide home. I always shoot just a touch a WD on there. I have a tank, but I ain't got the solvent right now. Then I take, put it in and then tighten it up just a little bit and notice that what I'm doing is I'm trying just to hit the top alright now I pull the hone out after that I didn't even go all the way down now I'm going to take this let's see what we got see there we go right there it wow it's got the same pull all the way up and down so it didn't need that all the way through to confer I'll take the valve man that is just absolutely perfect remember like I've told y'all a thousand times the key to the valve job is the straightness and tightness of the guide uh, that is also controlled by stem thickness. Now this is a 3 8 and look how big the head is. That's a lot of weight on here. So uh, not only is it important to get the rocker arm geometry correct, but spring pressure makes a big difference. The dynamics of, uh, of oscillation in the spring is controlled by the weight of the valve. Okay, so we got to watch that. Also, part of the rocker, there's a whole sequence, but mainly this valve. Uh, whereas 150 pounds might have worked with a stock valve that was cast material, lighter than this to begin with, it was 206. Now we're at 2250 with a stainless valve, which is a denser material. So we need to go up anywhere from 150 pounds to about 170 in that range, maybe even 180 pounds if we're going to climb up 62 to 6,500 RPM. Because if you don't, this way the valve, the lifter won't be able to follow it. It can dance on the seat. And also, um, 
we want that guide clearance so tight so that if we get the geometry correct, we're not getting this business from the rocker arm pushing on it. So setting these up mechanically to be sound like they are, the extra time to hand home the guides, putting them in a half thousandths to a thousandths undersize, this is your super high quality performance work. And 85% of the shops out there, guys, they're just not going to do it. So if you're having somebody doing performance work and precision work on the valve guides and the uh, 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 valve job and all that, I got a surprise for you. Like I told you about the sonic checker, here's your other tool. If they do not have a sun in hone all that hones the guides, and they're not using this hone all in the head with this or a dial board to get the stems clearance, guys, turn around and walk out the door because that means that they're not precisionly hand honing the guides to get them to the desired clearance that they're supposed to be. They're not doing it. They're just running a brooch. Here you go. They put a lot of lithium on there so that it'll wear in and then a few thousand miles down the road, guess what? Your valve job's gone. The valve stems will start getting loose. So make sure this little tool right here, last time I checked was right 12 or 13 a few years ago. It might be more than that now. But you've got to have this hone off to get precision measurements on the guide. If you don't, then they're half-assing it. They're charging you cheap. Typically, most of these shops charge around $80 to $100 to put them liners in. Um, I don't do that. I'm going to be honest. I charge $100.5 to do it because I'm hand honing them. I'm getting every one of them exactly the same. I mean, I do offer a street package where I'll put them in like them guys do, and it's okay and all, but if you've got a really precision head, you're climbing the RPM, Man, the valve guys just have to be perfectly tight and straight, just like a piston in a cylinder bore. All right, I'm going to go ahead and hit the rest of these, get the guide work done, and then begin the valve job.